Hello and welcome to the PACUP's Sustainable Packaging Trends presentation. My name is Paul Jenkins, Managing Director. Over the next 45 minutes or so, we will do the following. We'll have um, a short introduction to the PACUP and the Innovation Zone. We'll then have a, um, a short overview of the sustainable packaging trend areas. And then we're going to split the number of innovations into two sections. So the first one will be looking at some new sustainable packaging innovations generally, looking at all sorts of different areas around recycling, compostability, and the like. And the second section will focus primarily on the refillable and reusable packaging market. We'll then have a summary. Um, we'll then detail a webinar special offer and then details of our next event. You'll get a link to this webinar recording post event. So the pack up four main areas of service. We offer technical support and project management for projects large and small. We run and host uh, packaging events, um, although obviously the last six months has not allowed us to do that, hence uh, focus more on webinars but we will hope we hope to be back uh, next spring with our uh, our next event we also do packaging reports we did a sustainable packaging email this year and we've just launched our refillable and reusable packaging compendium more information on that in a second and last but not by no means least we have our innovation zone uh, packaging database this is a resource that um, collates all the, the global uh, latest packaging innovations in a searchable and easy to use um, platform. We have over 4,200 packaging initiatives and upload um, up to 20 new innovations every week from concept to in market launch. So we're, we're not only reflecting the um, innovations that you might find on a supermarket shelf, but we're also doing um, university type developments that may be two or three years away from coming to fruition. It's a very much a global view. We have the word packaging translated in 15 different languages. So we're getting a, a view internationally and a, an excellent way to keep teams up to speed and inspire and get some really good idea generation. These are some of the subscribers, members to the um, database. So a real uh, cross section of brands, retailers and uh, packaging suppliers. As I mentioned, we've got a refillable reusable packaging compendium. More on that at, at the end of the, um, the broadcast. But we've collated 175 market, market initiatives with visuals, analysis, comment. We've done some consumer research, gets exclusive uh, views and opinions of end consumer. Uh, we've done 17 key stakeholder interviews, uh, including companies such as Unpackaged, Loop, Recoup, King of Shades. Bauer Collective, Al Grammo, University Sheffield, RAP, etc. Um, and we've also got a, an industry contact summary with a, a list of the, the key global contacts. So a, a vital report for the refillable and reusable packaging market, which is growing significantly of late. Okay, so in terms of the, um, before we start looking at some of the latest innovations, I think it's important to sort of reflect on what the packaging trends are, the sustainable packaging trends. Uh, and I make apologies for anyone that has viewed our uh, recent webinars. The trends do not change overnight, so these are very consistent with previous broadcasts. So you may have heard this before. Um, so the packaging trends are as follows. <coughs> Compostable and biodegradable. It's in lots of development over the last three years, mainly sort of challenger brand activities. And some confusion over the end of life, uh, industrial compostable and, and how that's dealt with um, in, in, by local authorities. Uh, but, they, you know, we are reflecting what's going on in the market and have been a number of new developments in that area. Biomaterial developments, we've seen a lot of uh, new uh, innovations, really more university type developments and so not necessarily uh, coming in, into market yet. We've seen uh, Katie, tomato fiber, whey, banana stem, mushroom tissue, uh, pasta waste, bamboo, shrimp, coffee waste, and, and things like sugarcane, which is probably the most prevalent and most uh, seen example um, in, in the market. 
Recycling is clearly a big area of development. You know, the plastic packs that have been introduced around the world have a heavy focus on uh, improving recyclability. Um, so this is really about um, not just recyclability, but increased recycled content uh, in, in packaging. And as I said right at the beginning, we've seen a big increase in the number of reusable and refillable packaging examples uh, coming to market from a relatively small base. But this particular sector has a very bright future. Carbon concern, that's about sort of light weighting and sort of pack reduction um, uh, initiatives that uh, have the double benefit of environmental um, opportunities as well as cost saving. Packaging is a proxy, uh, weight is a, actually a proxy for, for quality. So the more you reduce the packaging weight, the, 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 the more that is inferred that it may be inferior potentially. Uh, more innovations are announcing sort of LCA as part of the, of the change justification. And we believe this will continue to grow. Um, reducing waste, so this is all about um, packaging that increases product shelf life. It's been a big area of development over the last few years. And plastic elimination. So this is really since the Blue Planet 2 program, um, the reduction or complete elimination of plastic from the supply chain, a massive area of development. In some, to some extent, um, in conflict with carbon concern, um, you could argue, because um, plastic elimination may see the introduction of, of, of heavier products and more carbon um, more carbon testing uh, products in terms of glass and, and things like that, which may actually have a higher carbon footprint. And those three are not sustainable packaging innovations, but are still uh, trend areas of note. So the uh, innovations that we'd like to now discuss, as we always say before our before we go through these innovations, these aren't an, an endorsement of best practice from from the pack up. We're not saying that these are the uh, the stand the standout innovations that you must follow. Uh, we feel it's important to reflect what is going on, um, and these are the innovations coming to market. So some would have more of an environmental impact than others. Sustainability in packaging can be subjective, um, and we've ignored obvious areas of greenwashing like statements like 100% sustainable, whatever that means. So the first innovation to talk about is uh, an Italian salad range, um, one of the Italy's main producers of fresh and ready to eat fruit and vegetables. La Linea Verdi is also a leader in the sale of washed packaged salads. The business has introduced a new pack format, um, a range of salads in the the Midi C branded bags has been launched in biodegradable and compostable packaging derived from biomaterials. The innovation is the result of an all Italian collaboration between La Lenia Verdi and Novamont, who are extrusion and ex co, co extrusion blown business, Trinocrack, Plast, and Carton Pack. The wrapping film is made up of layers of different types of Novamont matter B an established family of bioplastic materials. The pack has excellent transparency, apparently, and has the rigidity and toughness to maintain pack shape and integrity of the product. It is printed using compostable inks, and the pack is suitable for composting in industrial plants. So not home composting, this one. Next up is an innovation from uh, Singapore, the National University of Singapore. They're aiming to reduce the amount of agricultural product to a produce that is wasted. The research team is exploiting the fact that pineapple leaves are able to preserve perishable food fresher for longer. Another significant potential benefit is that the leaves can also be helped to uh, clean toxic chemicals from wastewater. The research team chemically treated the pineapple leaves to convert the biomass into, a, into an arable that preserves other fruits and vegetables. The process commences with the shredding and blending of the pineapple leaf fibers in water combined with small quantities of non-toxic chemicals. The mixture is then freeze-dried, sorry, it is then freeze-dried, which is treated with activated carbon powder to enable uh, the absorption of ethylene gas. The ethylene hormone stimulates the ripening process in fruit and vegetables. It has been estimated um, that this in combination with activated carbon can delay the produce 
rotting process by around 14 days. It can absorb around six times more ethylene than existing ethylene absorbents. A patent has been filed for this solution. Next up is wood packaging specialist Perhu Lassos, apologies for my falling uh, Spanish there, which delivers innovations to uh, enhance sustainable perfume and cosmetic packaging. The Barcelona based business has announced the introduction of a glue free wooden cap, which is a removable and recyclable plastic inner, the first of its kind apparently. The removable plastic inner means that it can be easily recycled post use. Also made available is a monomaterial threaded wooden cap. The recently developed patented wooden cap, the Woodle, takes the ongoing challenge of multi-material component recycling. The inner plastic is designed to be easily removed and then recycled after its consumer, its useful life. Post-consumer recycled plastic can also be incorporated to further enhance environmental credentials. And of course, a wooden cap um, whether uh, it is you know, the right thing for the environment is something that's seen uh, as an uh, environmentally friendly um, material by consumers. Next up from the Absolute Company and something which has created quite a stir, certainly in, um, on the LinkedIn posts that we've, uh, we've, we've, we've uh, done on this. The Absolute um, Company is examining alternatives to glass bottle formats with the announcement that it is testing a small quantity of paper-based bottles. The activity is part of its collaboration with Pogoco, a joint venture between Swedish pulp and paper manufacturer Belarus Korsnas and bottle manufacturer Alpo Group. Pogoco's other partners include Coca-Cola, Carlsberg and L'Oreal. The first production of 2000 prototypes will be submitted for controlled testing in Sweden and in the UK. The latest model is made from a combination of 57% paper and 43% plastic. The whole bottle is recyclable and is made of 100% recycled content. Following the initial feedback from consumers, a second pilot production run is planned. Absolute Vodka and Absolute Mix will be the first two products tested in this paper bottle. The recycled plastic makes up the single barrier layer of the bottle, which can be successively recycled with processing systems for this material already in place. The next stage of development is striving towards the ultimate goal of a fully bio-based bottle. At the moment it's 43% plastic, which is not a good headline um, from a sustainability point of view. It has been estimated that 3 million Pringles tubes are sold every day across Europe. The distinctive pack is being redesigned due to it being very hard to recycle. The composition of the ubiquitous tube is complex, comprising of a metal base, metal tear off freshness lid, foil lined cardboard sleeve topped off with a plastic cap. The combination of these materials is necessary to maintain a 15 month shelf life, but makes it impossible to recycle through existing waste systems. The new packs have been developed and are being tested in selected Tesco stores and are made of 90% paper. The rest is made of a a, um, a PE and aluminium combination plastic barrier to protect the contents against both oxygen and moisture. Both recycled plastic and paper lid options are also being trialled and you'd be delighted to hear that they will both still produce the distinctive pop sound strongly associated with the brand. The new development designs have been in development for over a year and you may remember that we did um, mention a, a, an ASTA initiative for their own label variant of this uh, a few months ago. Next up um, is from uh, UK supermarket leaders Tesco, who plan to change uh, the, the, um, with an introduction of the first recycled food grade soft plastic packaging from materials returned by uh, customers. A trial will see the retailer's own label cheese brand use the recycled packaging via their supplier Brapperies. It will contain a minimum of 30% recycled material. Recycling collection points specifically for the soft plastics were introduced to 10 Southwest Tesco stores with a view to identifying ways to create a closed loop recycling system. The material was sent to London based leading chemical recycling company Plastic Energy. They used plastic, they used packaging to come, they used packaging is converted into oil through pyrolysis. 
The recycled oil was then used by Sabic in their production process to make new plastic pellets. Sildair produced the new packaging for seven different cheese variants. Work is ongoing to assess potential scalability. Next up, it's been reported that every day the UK uses an estimated 6 million PE coated and laminated board packs for the sandwich market. The majority cannot be recycled due to it not being practical to separate the plastic from the board. Telford UK packaging manufacturer Cyrain, who have been regular um, mentions in our recent uh, webinar uh, broadcast, has, a, has progressed uh, a solution to tackle this for unrecyclable sandwich packs. Their earth wedge sandwich packs have been developed using a combination of coated boards and coated papers. This means that the whole pack can be recycled as part of the paper stream. There is no necessity to try and to separate layers or remove films from the pack. Extensive trials have been conducted to make sure the packs deliver the necessary ease of use as well as the demanded shelf life. The new packs are suitable for heat sealing and can be in-store assembled. They can be supplied fully rounded or plain in standard sizes or customizable as required. So this is very much the future of sandwich packaging going forward. Next up, we've seen the continued and steady growth of the e-commerce sector, uh, which has only really been extend, accelerated uh, during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic time. Um, it, the sector generates a lot of packaging in order to ensure products are safely transported through the supply chain. This has seen a notable shift in demand for more sustainable packaging options. Atlanta headquartered Georgia Pacific has a reputation for making packaging for the e-commerce market and is expanding its offerings to include paper padded mailers, which are curbside recyclable. This is an alternative to non-recyclable dual packaging material. The company has opened a new facility in Arizona to manufacture the new padded mailers with Amazon very much as a key customer. Last year, Amazon introduced this recyclable paper padded mailer, which protects custom orders and is fully recyclable. The recyclable padded envelope was developed by technicians at Amazon's and Henkel's packaging and materials lab. The mailer combines a unique expansive material which contains no uh, polystyrene between layers of craft paper made at Georgia Pacific's um, paper mills. The mailer has received a widely recyclable label from the How To Recycle campaign. Next up, Massachusetts-based Harpic Ulmer has announced the launch of a new paper-based packaging technology. Much of today's multi-layered and material packaging cannot be reprocessed with existing recycling systems. The ongoing drive to, for mono-material and paper-based solutions is high on food packaging supply development agendas. Harpic, Harpac, uh, Alma is advancing G. Mondini's line of paper steel trays as a sustainable alternative to plastic plates. The concept is the outcome of a collaboration between the company and Graphic Packaging International and has already been launched in Europe and Asia. Trays are produced with renewable fibre sourced from sustainably managed forests. Each tray utilises 89% paperboard and 10 to 20% film, depending on tray dimensions, limiting base tray wastes just 2% and industry low. In addition, the tray film liner is easily separated from the paperboard after use to simplify recycling. A one-piece flange design makes sealing surface strength equal to traditional plastic trays. The trays can be stacked flat to improve logistics efficiencies. The tray can deliver up to 28 days of shelf life. It is suitable for a wide range of applications, including cheese, meat, ready mills, ready-made meals, frozen foods, snacks, salad, and fruit. Next up, Tokyo-based chemical and cosmetics company, Keo Corporation, um, have been quite um, active in uh, the sustainable packaging space over the last few months, and we've tracked two or three of their recent initiatives. They've been striving to reduce plastic consumption with the development of a new packaging solution that promises to reduce plastic use by a reported 50% compared with plastic bottles with a pump dispenser. The Raku Raku switch attaches directly to the Eco Pack refill packs to turn them into primary packaging to reduce plastic use compared to plastic bottles that use a pump dispenser. 
The Racco Retro switch attaches to the opening of the refill pack, which is made of a plastic film. At the other end of the switch is a dispensing spout. In the middle is a soft button that, when pressed, releases a fixed amount of liquid contents to be dispensed. This makes the product easy to use with little physical effort required. The design also helps maintain a sanitary state by preventing air and water from entering even whilst the contents are being dispensed. Natura is a global Brazilian personal care cosmetics group headquartered in Sao Paulo. The business is boosting its sustainability credentials with the launch of a reverse logistics program to encourage consumers to recycle often more difficult packaging. For every five full size packs that shoppers bring back to participate in cosmetic stores, they will receive a new pack uh, as a generous recycling incentive. The activity applies across Natura's four Brazilian retail brands, Avon Natura, The Body Shop and Aesop. The operation is taking place in conjunction with global packaging uh, recycling experts, TerraCycle, who are responsible for managing the collection and subsequent recycling of packaging. The collected material will create new packaging items such as garden furniture, plant pots, traffic cones, vegetable boxes and the like. The activity is taking place in 60 Brazilian Natura shopping at stores and 35 the body shop outlets. The purpose is to promote the accurate disposal of packaging recycling with an overarching circular economy. Last up, before we focus on refillable and reusable specifically, is a detergent bottle made from 100% recycled, specifically from Hamburg, Germany. A regional bottle to bottle recycling initiative has been created by a team of five collaborators. Um, across Veolia, Unilever, Bundy, and TU Hamburg. Each partner assumes their own special role in the regional recycling initiative. Germany's fourth largest drugstore retailer, Bundy, Bundy is selling the culmination of the development, a detergent bottle made from 100% Hamburg-based recycler. Packaging waste is collected and sent to Viola's Hamburg sorting facility. The HDPE waste is sorted by colour and shredded, cleaned, processed and shaped into, uh, to be ultimately used to produce the re a detergent bottle made from 100% recycled plastic. Now, obviously, we've seen a lot of these recycling initiatives uh, in the market, but I think it's quite interesting to see one that is um, from a, a specific city uh, to all the, uh, the area and um, all the, all the um, recycled content is coming from a specific area. That's certainly a, a new one for us. Now, the second section, which is around specifically the growing reusable and refillable packaging market. Australian environmentally responsible cleaning products company Nature's Organic has announced the launch of the Cove brand. The range of cleaning products taps into the rapidly growing consumer appetite for reusable and refillable packaging, particularly in the household cleaning sector. The range of surface bathroom, glass cleaners and concentrated laundry liquid is packed in reusable aluminium bottles designed to be replenished at home alongside recyclable pouches. The refill pouches contain plant-based formulations and are designed to be mixed with water from the consumer's tap. The removal of water from refills significantly reduces the size of the packaging. 75% less water is used in the production process. The smaller and lighter pack helps to reduce emissions through its journey in the supply chain. The pouches are made with 80% less plastic than a standard bottle. The Cove brand has partnered with Recycle to ensure the refill pouches are recyclable through return to store program to be recycled into, again, items such as park benches and playground equipment. Shoppers can choose a starter kit, which includes refillable bottles and one refill of each product. Cove products can be ordered online as well as through Austra throughout Australia in Coles and Riches stores. The world first is being claimed here with the introduction of an unlimited returnable container subscription for the food takeaway industry. Our innovation zone has tracked several returnable container schemes recently, seemingly encouraged by a shift in consumer behaviour due to COVID-19 lockdown restrictions. 
The solution by Bearpack in this example is claimed to be a practical service to make the takeaway food market more sustainable. It does away with single use disposable packaging and allows for takeaways to be used on demand without consumers having to plan ahead to bring their own containers. Consumers can check out reusables from partner vendors and return reusables to any participating drop site with the Go Box app. Bearpack is a returnable container system that gives operators the opportunity to offer a more sustainable way to deliver takeaway. Each vendor is assigned a unique QR code used by customers to check out their reusables. Vendors can simply self-select what containers or cups they wish to stock. Bearpack delivers an initial stock of clean reusables deposit free. Customers must have a Bearpack subscription and use the app to borrow reusables. Natural uh, deodorant brand Norneco has plans to be a fully plastic free business by the middle of next year. A major part of this mission will be achieved via a collaboration with new boutique packaging company Verity on the introduction of a refillable stainless glass deodorant pack. California-based Norneco is now making small batch refillable stainless steel tubes via an online subscription. The packaging case has been designed to last a lifetime, and this is combined with a kick in refill. A starter kit that comes with one case and one refill costs $45. Each subsequent refill is sent every three months via a courier at a cost of $22. Nonico will phase out all plastic within their range over the next 12 months. Verity plans to make refillable beauty accessible for brands for, of every size. Now, this is quite an exciting innovation from El Grammar, and we have focused on three or four of their uh, initiatives over the last couple of years. This one sees uh, Nestle Carina, who are testing new ways to reduce single-use packaging as a way, as well as improve engagement with consumers. A new pilot for a bulk delivery system for, for their Perina dog chow products is underway. It comes to market via a partnership with our Grammo business building reusable packaging systems in their native chili market. Shoppers use a mobile app and select one of two Perina dog chow products as well as choose a delivery time. Our Grammo have three electric tricycles that distribute pet food to consumers' front doors in eight Santiago communities. The product is then dispensed into reusable and refillable container, which are equipped with a refillable delivery and payment system. It has been established, it has been estimated rather, that 10 grams of plastic per kilogram of product is saved. Electric delivery vehicles also offer carbon footprint reduction advantages. As part of the retailer's packaging mission, Aldi Nord and the Aldi South are rolling out a strategy that will see the reduction in packaging volume for their own brands of 30% by 2025. One of the strands of the approach for Aldi South will be the introduction of reusable bags for their baked goods products in the German market. This will be an alternative to paper bags with conventional viewing windows. The new washable fabric bags are made of Global Organic Textile Standard, GOTS, Certified Organic Cotton. Shoppers will be able to hygienically transport loose baked goods to their homes to reduce their packaging consumption. The cotton material is breathable and therefore not only keeps baked goods fresh and crispy on the way home, but is also suitable for storing them in it. The bag can be used several times for shopping and is also washable at 30 degrees Celsius. A bag can be closed tightly and securely with a drawstring. Bags also meet the requirements of the glue, the green button scheme, which is a seal for ecologically and socially fair product produced textiles. The reusable bags are available in all Aldi stores, branches for 99 euro cents, which is about 91 pence. The drive to reduce single-use packaging and decrease household plastic waste has led to some inventive reusable pack alternatives from around the world. Here we see European retailer Spa on the case who have introduced a new reusable packaging solution for food items for their Interspa hypermarket chain across Hungary. 
The washable snack and go food pack is BPA free solution suitable for the packaging of a variety of different items such as fruit and vegetables, sandwiches, and even seeds. The inside of the distinctive looking bag is made of a stain repellent material. It does not allow moisture to pass through, but still offers excellent breathability to help keep produce in optimum condition. It is not clear how much this bag, how much this will cost shoppers to purchase. UK retailer Morrison's has announced that it will be testing the removal of plastic bags in some of its stores to be replaced by versions made from paper. The UK, UK's fourth largest supermarket is offering paper carrier bags to shoppers as part of its drive to remove what they see as unnecessary plastic from its stores. Morrison's Welsh outlets will be the first to make available paper carrier bags with a rollout to the whole retail estate in due course. The paper bags have been trialled in eight Morrison stores already and have apparently been proved popular. They are made by AB Group Packaging in Wales as part of their re paper pack offering. The bags are made from paper from sustainably managed forests and are strong enough to carry heavy weights up to 16 kilos. They will be priced at 20 pence, which will be the same price as Morrison's standard plastic carrying bag. The paper grocery bags can be reused and ultimately recycled. The full rollout will remove an estimated 1,300 tonnes of plastic each year. Various independent studies indicate that paper bags have a higher carbon footprint than their plastic equivalent. However, Morrison's have announced that they have independently assessed the new bag's carbon footprint and it is equivalent to the standard plastic carrier bag. Now, the health and beauty market has been working hard to reduce incidences of single-use packaging, and the deodorant sector has been particularly active, especially in this refill and reusable space. Millions of deodorant packs are not recycled each year. Kima is a new refillable deodorant applicator that is filled, refilled with natural pods. The applicators boast a modern curved design, as you can see, available in six colours, and instead of throwing away the plastic deodorant and buying a new one each time, a reusable deodorant applicator can be refilled once the whole pod has been used. The company has partnered with leading manufacturers in natural products such as Pretty Frank and the unscented company, the Green Emporium, etc., to make the pods. The deodorant applicator features a patent pending mechanism that keeps pods leftovers in a clip to allow the user to push it up on top of the new refill to ensure all the product gets used. That's a really interesting packaging benefit to ensure that 100% of the product gets used. The shipping packaging is made of recycled material, as you might expect, and is recyclable and also biodegradable. The refill pods are also free of plastic wrapping and Kima refillable deodorant applicators cost um, 22 Canadian dollars and can be pre-ordered as part of a Kickstarter campaign. So this is very much in development. This may not ever come to market, but I think it's important to reflect the kind of activities that are going on uh, behind the scenes. E-commerce uh, enterprises, Chipo, Otto and Avocado Store are working together as part of a three-year Praxpack research project to combat the vast quantity of single-use shipping packaging that is generated in the German market. They are testing the feasibility of a reusable mailing bags using the Repack brand system. A reusable mailer made of recycled plastic will be tested and can be folded by the user to, be, to then be sent back free of charge by the German postal system. It is anticipated that the Repack bags could be in circulation for 20 or more uses. The Repack organization will be responsible for the return of logistics, cleaning and processing. The trial will assess if consumers are willing to pay extra for reusable mailing bags. Will they be willing to send the reusable bags back? And that is the king, because they won't, it doesn't work, and what their what they will what their general acceptance of, of it is. It is believed that 7,500 one-way mailing bags with repack reusable bags will be replaced in the first trial. Uh, and about avocado store is planning to send up to 2,000 proprietary retail packs in the fashion sector. For the reusable system. It has been estimated that coffee giant Starbucks use around six billion beverage cups a year. 
across more than 30,000 outlets around the world. Staggering. The vast majority are still not recycled, unfortunately. The Seattle-based business has announced the introduction of a reusable circular cup, which is made with the recycling of six single-use paper cups. The new mug has been created by Cornwall-based Circular & Co, which specialises in recycled cups and travel mugs. The use of reusables is part of Starbucks' ongoing commitment to reducing waste and becoming a resource-positive company. The new cups look very similar to traditional paper cups. They have, um, they have had the plastic lining, inner lining, replaced with a biodegradable material. The Circular Cup is a reusable product that is claimed should last four years. The Circular Cup um, in distinctive Starbucks livery isn't cheap and is available for £11.95. That's what, about 13 American dollars, I'd imagine. Multinational brewery and pub chains, um, Brewdog, like to do things differently. The Maverick brand is often in the news uh, with several recent attention-seeking initiatives of late. The brand is uh, taking another unusual initiative in its sustainability efforts to become a zero-waste business. They have publicly acknowledged that the packaging can, sorry, the beverage can printing process is quite inefficient. They estimate that almost a billion otherwise perfectly good cans are wasted every year in the UK alone. It's fair to say the majority of these would be, uh, if not all, would be recycled. But several factors contribute to this high number. Uh, Print-ready processes, minimum run sizes, various areas of production, inaccuracies and forecasting into this significant waste. Brewdog has started an initiative to save the cans that would otherwise go to waste. Their punk IPA brand is now available in trash cans variant that sees cans sank and reused. The cans lack uniformity, but the brand is keen to assure drinkers that it is what is inside that is important. And if that lack, lack of uniformity probably works to their benefit in helping to communicate what they're doing. Now, the last innovation of this session is from uh, McDonald's, who have announced a global partnership with TerraCycle's Loop Circular Packaging Service to test a new reusable cup model for hot drinks. The initiative will be trialled across select UK restaurants and assists customers uh, can consume a hot drink in a reusable cup whilst cutting down on their packaging waste. The model marks significant progress towards a more circular packaging model for McDonald's and helps the world's largest restaurant chain assess how reusable packaging models could work within their systems. The durable loop created cup will be available for a small deposit. The deposit can then be redeemed by returning the cup to participating McDonald's restaurants. The cups will then be washed to be reused again in McDonald's restaurants. Loops cleaning systems have been developed in partnership with Ecolab to sanitize each item, which means each cup is hygienically cleaned before each reuse. It is also worth noting that most of McDonald's UK restaurants now have units for the recycling of both hot and cold paper cups. That's also reflected in other markets around the world. Okay, so hopefully that's been a, an interesting and insightful um, reflection on the, some of the latest pack, sustainable packaging innovations. So in terms of summary, um, the summary is broadly in line with previous uh, broadcasts of this type if the market doesn't change overnight. So what we're seeing is um, sustainability continuing to drive packaging change, as you might expect. Um, sustainable packaging is very much here to say this isn't a, a one or two year uh, blip of increase in activities. Sustainable packaging is a permanent, should be a permanent part of your packaging strategies. COVID-19 has clearly had an impact. Uh, we, about two months ago, we saw a big reduction in the amount of sort of uh, innovations of all types really coming through the innovation funnel. But it does seem to be back to normal now. We're certainly seeing a lot of new innovation coming through the pipeline of late. And specifically, we feel that the refillable and reusable packaging market is definitely one to watch. We're seeing significant increases uh, in the number of initiatives uh, coming to market. Two years ago, we probably tracked one or two refillable reusable initiatives. It's now uh, seven or eight a week. It's that kind of change. So 
So in terms of webinar special offers, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, our reef, pack of refillable and reusable packaging compendium is now available uh, and packed with vital trend information analysis and insight from a global perspective. Uh, we've got 175 market initiatives for visual analysis and comment, uh, consumer insights, we've done some research to find out what uh, consumers think of reusable and refillable packaging. Uh, we've interviewed 17 key stakeholders, experts, to understand their views, uh, shaping uh, in terms of what, how they're shaping the market growth. Uh, so a really vital and interesting um, publication of about 290 pages of content downloadable as a PDF. Um, so what we'll do is uh, we'll extend our early bird uh, offer uh, for another seven days to um, Friday the 9th of October. Um, and we'll also, if you order that as part of this deal, we'll also throw in our sustainable packaging compendium, which was available uh, earlier this year as a PDF free of charge. More information on that will be emailed to you. So thank you very much for your time. Um, our next uh, webinar will be, in all probability, Thursday the 29th of October, followed by Thursday the 19th of November. We're just tying up a few loose ends, but those two, pencil those in your diaries, as we anticipate those to be the next dates. So um, I'd like to thank you again uh, for joining us today. As I say, we will be sharing the recording of this broadcast uh, ASAP as well as giving information on the refillable compendium offer. So until next time, thank you very much. <laughs>